After making the last video, I decided that it would actually be a good idea to go ahead and implement that method that converts a complex to a string so that we could print it out nicely. In doing so, I realized that the functions that I wanted to use were part of C++11 and that we were starting to hit the point where it would be useful if I didn't actually type in the commands to build everything on the command line and instead I started to use a make file. Now, once again, for most of the semester, my students are going to be using an IDE uh, Visual Studio, and they won't necessarily be writing their own make files, but it's good to understand how make files work and also to be able to write your own. There are also tools in other languages, uh, Ant for Java, SBT for Scala, Maven is also used for Java, that are used for organizing the way in which programs are built. So. The situation that we have here is we have a two different CPP files. We have a complex.cpp, which has stuff in it. And you'll note, since this is kind of what motivated me doing this, I have this toString method in here. And for it to work, it calls a uh, version of toString, to underscore string, no caps. This is actually the way things are generally named in the C++ libraries. It converts the real and the imaginary to strings, and then it can concatenate these extra things on. In a bit, we'll talk about what the heck was going on with the code I had written before. Uh, anyway, the thing is, this function is part of the C++11 libraries. So when I go to compile this, I had to do something like this. I had to give an extra command line argument of C++. 11 use complex.cpp complex.cpp and then it would be able to compile it. If I leave out that argument, I get an error. Okay, so I didn't want to have to be typing that over and over again. Plus, if I really want to benefit from the advantages of separate compilation, I only want to compile the things that I've changed. And that's a pain to do manually, but that's why there are tools like make. So in order to use the make command, and since I've already written myself a make file, I can show you that when I type in make now, it automatically executes some commands which have not only the std equals C++11, but also some other options that I wanted to throw in here. The way that a make file works, the, the things that are significant, is you specify what it is that you're building, followed by a colon, followed by the dependencies. So the use complex is dependent upon use complex.o and complex.o. So the idea is we've compiled each of the two CPP files and then all that we're doing here is linking them together. So I give the command here and because I'm using this set of flags all over the place, I define up here the flags that I want to compile with. The hyphen std equals C++11 tells it to use the C++11 standard for doing the compiles. That is the standard, it's the newest standard, and it's the one that I will expect kind of us to be working with in class all year. This flag says to turn on all warnings, so it gives you more informative error messages. And this flag says that you, it should be pedantic about it, so basically giving you more messages about stuff. What happens if there isn't a use complex.o or a complex.o? In fact, I can remove star.o here and do make again. Well, when it goes to, when it sees that use complex needs use complex.o, it will go down to this other rule and say, okay, well, in order to build use complex.o, I do that when this file has been updated and this is the command that I would use to, to create it. So, and uh, things to note, there is a tab here. This is not spaces. That can be significant for make. So you can write whatever rules it is that you want in here, but as the way it works is it looks at the timestamps on the files that are to the right of the colon. And if those timestamps are newer than the timestamp on what's on the left, it will go ahead and redo the compile. Instead of removing those files, I could have touched them. 
touch just updates the timestamp on them. And now when I make, uh, I did actually let's touch star.cpp. Now when I make, it has to redo everything. So it makes the two object files. You'll note that one of these has a warning. This wasn't printing out previously. This was something that we weren't seeing because I didn't have the warn all and pedantic. We can actually go look at that. This is in the complex.cpp file on line 14. There is no return statement. Oop. Clearly I've gotten too used to a uh, Scala there where the last thing you type in is what you want it to build or what you want it to return. So now when I type in make, it doesn't bother building the use complex. It just does complex and then it links things together. Once again, that's the advantage of separate compilation. If this were a really big project, when I touch one file, it will do the minimum amount of work to get back the executable. Okay, now one last thing in this video. What was going on with the code that I had earlier with my strings? So I had defined an empty string and then I had added or concatenated on the uh, value of real and imaginary, which in this case were values of like one, two, three, four, uh, things along that magnitude. Well, so inside of my main here, I've written very similar code. I create a string and I add 7.6 to it, and then I output that string. That's what I just made over here. So what does that do? Well, it's actually this blank line down here. Okay. It didn't print out anything at all. Okay. So what's going on there? In order to understand this, it's probably helpful if I use a slightly larger number. So I'm going to make that number bigger. I'm going to remake the file. And now all of a sudden it prints out an A. Okay, so anyone who's familiar with their ASCII tables uh, might remember that 97 is the ASCII value for lowercase a. A string is just a collection of characters. And one of the features, features in quotes here, of C++ is that it's much looser with type conversions than Scala or Java are. And so while 97.6 is a double, and you really shouldn't be nicely or safely converting from doubles to cares, the C++ string library is perfectly happy doing it. And even with the worn all and pedantic, I'm not getting any type of message telling me that I'm doing something stupid here. Okay. It sees this, it basically trims off the fractional Part because it's doing a truncate and then it says hey 97 we're gonna add that onto the end of the string not as a number but as a character because in C++ the care type really is just a small integer value so that's why we were getting that weird behavior and why we have to go to the library's version of two string in order to nicely get things in string format